Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, I won't start my presentation with such a nice little film as my friend from the Clean Shipping Index. You have to stand it with me uh, speaking all the time. Uh, I hope you will manage. Uh, next in line for this uh, difficult and very interesting topic is the Baltic Maritime Science Park, represented by me, who uh, work as the deputy uh, project manager for this uh, initiative. I will start up this presentation with a brief background about the Baltic Maritime Science Park, what is it all about. Uh, I will then uh, continue with some uh, concrete examples from our network, how some of our partners have uh, been dealing with this, uh, with this topic in the past. Uh, and uh, yeah, give some, some good food for thoughts for the upcoming uh, discussion. Uh, Baltic Maritime Science Park uh, it's a regional uh, initiative from the beginning, from the region of Blekinge in the southeast corner of Sweden. Uh, the region of Blekinge has a rather impressive history when it comes to maritime safety and security cooperation projects. Uh, the region has been uh, the lead partner of two uh, large-scale EU-funded <coughs> Interreg projects, the Baltic Master Project and the Baltic Master 2 project, both of them dealing with uh, maritime safety and security issues with large partnerships, more than 50 partners from all nine Baltic Sea states in both of these two projects. And we realized that within these EU-funded interreg projects, for instance, you come up with, of course, a lot of interesting results. Uh, we are so good in writing reports. We are uh, excellent in writing reports, I would say. Uh, in the Baltic Master 2 project, for instance, we dealt a lot with uh, oil spill risk management. I was part of that project as well. And at the same time, only in the Baltic Sea region, there were at least three other uh, projects dealing with oil spill risk management. And the interaction between these four projects could have been much, much better. Of course, we attended each other's conferences and workshops and so on, but uh, yeah, the cooperation could have been much better. Uh, so we realized that we are so good in creating these three-year projects, for instance, but uh, how do we take the next step? How do we uh, transfer all these product results into, into innovations? How do we reach the end user on the ship or in the port, for instance? That was uh, yeah, a, quick, a quick background. The, the, the aim of the Baltic Maritime Science Park is to intend to establish uh, an innovation platform where different stakeholders and partners can meet in the same meetings. How do we connect the, the representatives from the university with the, the maritime companies and the in the maritime industry, create these arenas and uh, a platform for, for innovations. Uh, very shortly, the Baltic Maritime Science Park was founded together by five organizations, the Swedish Coast Guard, the Swedish Armed Forces, the region of Bleking already mentioned, and two universities, the Bleking Institute of Technology and the Linnaeus University. Uh, we intend to answer three different questions. The first one already mentioned, Second one, also mentioned, most important, how do we ensure the transference of product results into uh, innovations? And uh, thirdly, uh, we can be much better. We are good in cooperation in the Baltic Sea region, but we can, of course, be much better. And also cooperate with other sea bases around Europe. Of course, they're doing a lot of good things in the Black Sea, for instance. We can exchange knowledge, or the Mediterranean, or North Sea, whatever. OK, back to the topic of this workshop. Can clean and safe Baltic shipping make money? Uh, yes, of course it can. From our point of view, we think uh, that cooperation is, uh, is a key. Uh, cooperation between all these different uh, actors. Uh, within the Baltic Maritime Science Park, we work with a method called the Triple Helix Method, where authorities, organizations, work together with the uh, university, academia, and most important, the industry, uh, the maritime, uh, companies. We are connected to several uh, science and technology parks, uh, uh, maritime company networks, a lot of interesting companies in the network. <coughs> and we aim to work as matchmakers to combine these uh, researchers with these companies, try to get the companies to uh, find all these problems. Uh, we would see development in this area, connect this company with this uh, researcher, for instance. Uh, of course, the vision is safe and clean shipping, but it needs to be cost efficient. We need to find uh, sustainable solutions. If we 
we need, of course, sustainable solutions for the future. That's a, that's a fact. And uh, the early adapters, they, the one that will take the lead, of course, they will have a, a huge advantage when finding the solutions for the next generation. Uh, some concrete uh, examples from our uh, network. Within the Baltic Master 2 project already mentioned, uh, we had some partners in three small ports in the southeast corner of Sweden, the port of Vestervik, the port of Oskarshamn, and the port of Kalmar. They uh, identified a problem when the ships entered these three uh, small ports. Uh, in many cases, the ships couldn't get rid of their uh, oily water, the sludge water, in, in the port, because the couplings did not match. The coupling from the ship and the coupling in the port, they did not match. So they couldn't leave their, their, their oily water, which meant that they most probably get rid of their oily water out in the Baltic Sea instead, and that's not a very good solution. So these uh, three ports sat down together, uh, they identified the problem, they discussed a solution, they contacted a, a small company who developed a, a tool, they constructed this extremely simple uh, universal adapter, uh, didn't cost that many uh, thousand euro, I would say, uh, extremely simple, and with this uh, very simple tool, now about 90% of all the ships in the world can connect their couplings can connect with this extremely simple solution. Um, and of course, there are many parts of the chain that can be safer, cleaner, and more efficient. If three small ports in, uh, in, in Sweden can find this solution, there must be <coughs> so many good solutions out there. Don't have time for this one, I think. I'll end up with uh, another example from the Baltic Master 2 project, uh, a good way of earning money, and that is to be prepared from the beginning. This is a very nice picture, could be any shoreline in the Baltic Sea. Uh, looks very nice, but it is a very fragile situation. An accident could happen at any time. We know that it's probably the most traffic sea in the world, more than 2,000 ships and vessels you know, operating all the time. And uh, this could be what your shoreline would look like in the future, if something like this would happen. So we... Uh, during the Baltic Master 2 project, we uh, asked the question, how much would an oil spill actually cost? And conducted a quite uh, extensive study. We uh, hired a consultancy agency who made a, a really extensive calculation how much an oil spill actually costs. And not only the, the direct costs uh, when it comes to cleanup operations and, and that kind of thing. They also included loss of income from, from tourism, loss of income from uh, fisheries. But even more important, maybe, uh, they involve the, the non-market costs. How much is this shoreline worth for, for the people visiting this area, for instance? And uh, one of the, I think, most uh, extensive studies for this region, at least, how much an oil spill actually costs. Uh, we made a very, I, I will make it very, very short. Uh, three different case study areas. Uh, the region of Blekinge in Sweden, the region of Skåne in Sweden, and the north coast of, of Poland. Uh, two ships were colliding in this uh, fictive case. Uh, oil went into the water, about 10,000 tons of oil, it uh, suddenly hit the shore. Uh, and the costs for this. I won't go through it all, but it's not only the, as you can see, the, the costs for the cleanup operation, the direct costs. The, the main parts are the, uh, the market costs and the non-market costs. And this was a, a rather, I wouldn't say small, but a moderate uh, Oil spill, 10,000 tons. We know that there are tankers trafficking much more oil in the Baltic Sea today, maybe 100,000 tons of oil or 150,000 tons of oil. And with this quite moderate oil spill, uh, it would cost almost 100 million euro for the region of Blekinge, this small region. And of course, uh, a good way of earning money is to be prepared and make sure that this won't happen. Yeah, some, some food for thoughts from the Baltic Maritime Science Park, and we'll be here during the entire annual forum down in the uh, project village area in the stand of the Danish Maritime Authority. Okay, thank you. Thank you.